Beautiful. Our first date. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably was at the homemade. Oh, yeah, it was. Well, that's when that I girl mean, set a, us up that time. That's the story I heard. Uh, yeah, growing that's up. Oh, they yeah, the set first us day up. was you bought me off the football field. Yep, thank you. It, it that was. was. That was the first date. That was. That was the beginning of the love affair between myself and the cheerleader. So the producers of the film, which of course is our family, uh-huh. uh, including including Cole, he's an honorary member. Yeah. Uh, they talked about filming um, the first date scene, uh, and also they talked about filming the baptism scene, and just some of the difficulties uh, involved in that. Girls are supposed to act like they don't eat nothing on these dates, but I'm absolutely starving. Hey, Rachel. Okay. Um, could I get two muffin sandwiches and a large fry? What you want? I can pay. Hey, no, come on. You drove. I got this. Uh, you know, I don't really eat after the games anyway, so I think I'm just gonna get something for Sai. So. You know what? I changed my mind. Um, could I, you just give me one of those single grilled cheeses? And Rachel, you owe me a fry from last week, so don't go cheating on me again. Okay. Fries are for skinny bones. Another location that I loved was for Tita's, mm-hmm. uh, which is um, the diner. The, yeah, the diner, which they make a sandwich called a muffaletta. So I thought I thought most people, if you're not from Louisiana. And she orders a muff. They're like, what, what, are, what, are they, what are they eating? Yeah. It's, that, it's a sandwich. Willie yeah. makes them, yeah. by the way, and they're delicious. Yeah. Um, but I love that because that place has been there for years and still operating, and it looks exactly like it looked. It was a true example of how, like, you know, the community is giving to us and allowing us to be there and, and tell the story. But it was a great way that we could kind of, the production kind of gave back to because, you know, the neon sign at the top of the building that says Fertitas has been there, you know, since, I mean, that restaurant's been open for, I don't know how many years, like 50 years or something yeah. like that. It's um, a lady and her son who still run it, and her husband was the one who started it. Well, their sign on the top of the building hasn't worked in like 20 years. And so we wanted to shoot the outside of the building, though, because it's incredible. And um, so our, yeah, our production designer and his team, they brought someone in to fix the neon sign that hasn't been working in 20 years. So we got it all lit up for him. And um, what was really incredible is we had her, she came out and her and her son came out when we were shooting that scene that night. And I parked him in front of the monitor, you know, and let him listen and everything. And when Kay orders a Muffy, she just started crying. And it was just the sweetest moment. And she was like, you know, my husband started this so many years ago and just like, it's gonna be preserved forever now, you know? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was special. This is Miss Kay. And Uncle Si, on the blind on DVD today. Visit theblindmovie.com. A lot of people talk about the scene that the baptism scene and how powerful that was for you. Um, and, you know, you think about it, I don't know how many you've baptized since even the movie's been out. But it's been a, it's well, been a lot. about last Sunday? He did seven. And then uh, after church, that was after his class and all. And then after the big church, there were three more. Yeah. Ten. And that was just one one Sunday. Oh, and it was. Just, and it's happening all across America. It's not just here. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I mean, there's been a lot of people. Because I was up there with it was girls, young girls, and I was up there. I could have fell in the baptistry. I tried not to, but in the front of it, you know. <laughs> it's better if you don't, mom. Because I was trying to, you know, make them. Some of them were so afraid, like he was going to drown them or something. Right. They and were I was afraid. Trying, a couple of them said, "This is it. This is it for me." Yeah. yeah. And I said, we're, we're, "We're going to raise you up out of the water." She. I said, we're "Look at going, him. He's strong enough to do that." You. Right. You're not going to drown. That's right. We love you. That's right. You, all your sins are going to be removed here. You love Jesus. He said, just relax. I told Dad it was part of our languaging, which is biblical, but we say, well, come on up here and we're going to put you to death. But if you're morbidly afraid of water, yeah. <laughs> that's the ultimate thing to say to someone. <laughs> Oh, yeah. As they're walking into a well, pool of water, they let me put you to death and let you be renewed. Well, that's a why of them, I went when they up went there. down out of the water, they instantaneously 
you thought, now I'm going to drown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but could, I told them, I said, I, I got mean, you. It was 1,000 and they're up. All right, should we tell the baptism story? Um, Cause that was like the greatest day and also kind of the worst day. Cause, <laughs> cause it's, the, it's the main part of it. It's, it's like, it's the scene in the movie. Yes. And this is, this is the thing, right? <laughs> yes. And, and Aaron was, so he's from England. You probably couldn't tell by watching the film because we did a great job coaching him on his accent, you know, pat on the back, yeah. I had to work with him, he called, it's Mallard. No, it's Mallard. <laughs> That's what I said, Mallard. I said, no, no, Mallard. Yeah. Uh, so he did not want to get in the water. Well, and it was, I mean, this was like bayou water. Yes. With I, but I thought it was clean looking. But, I, but from, from being from Louisiana, I'm yeah. like, it's black. That's clean. It's not like it's not like you know. It's a beautiful. I had that black color to it, but it, but you couldn't see you know six inches deep. And uh, so he's like, I'm not getting in that water. Who knows what pathogens? And I, 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 I we swim in this water. We do it all the time. It's not a big deal. So finally, we like work him up to it. And he's like, Okay, I'm gonna get in, but uh, but it's, it's like, like I got to get in and get out. And well, so, really, you have one take anyway, because then he's going to be yeah, all wet, wet, his hair is wet, you're going to have to blow yeah. dry, change clothes. I mean, it would have been a big mm. thing to... Yeah, we'd have had to completely reset him, reset. send him back to hair and makeup, Yeah, Yeah, dry, and to do redo, this more than once. Like, you got one back. take. But they considered it a stunt, which I'm like, it's not a stunt, but they considered it a stunt. So then they had to build a platform that they submerged in the water for them to stand on. Again, someone from California did that, not understanding that this is Louisiana. We got there's beneath the water. There's this thing called gumbo mud that you, it's not going to work. You know, there's you gotta, no bottom to it. Yeah, there's no bottom to it. So, uh, so they get in the water. Uh, the, the Pastor Bill and Phil's character they get in the water for the baptism, and it's this beautiful scene. And um, but they weren't deep enough. So, so when this when. Was a Critical mistake you, you got in it. baptizing somebody. Willie was like, if I would have been on set, I would have known because he's baptized a lot of people. And by the like, way, yeah, yeah we got the baptizing the river shirt, which uh, Willie, yeah, he made fun of me about wearing this for a whole other discussion. <laughs> but but yeah, Willie said, I would have known that they were not deep enough yeah. in the water. You so, got to be at least like waist deep yeah. guess, to get somebody down and back up again. They're, yeah, you're yeah. taking their whole body and, yeah. and it's Underwater. so the, the pastor. Um, was baptizing somebody who's a lot bigger than him, you know, because Aaron was Aaron's probably tall. six feet. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, tall. Yeah, he's uh -huh. a tall guy. So John like, <laughs> goes to baptize him, but he can't get him back up. So he's like, so so he he gets him up finally, but then they like then they they start stumbling and falling, and they're like <laughs> literally trying to get up. They keep falling back down, and there's I mean because they're sinking in the mud, and then and then they had this embrace, <laughs> but the embrace is more like a kind of what is happening? They're just played it off. But when we saw it, I was like, we're sitting there watching it. We're I'm just like, like not gonna work. No. And then I saw them film and and. Corey and I both were like, no. Well, the problem was, is like, we didn't have a clean down and up. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he didn't come back, back up, up really. You know? but, he didn't, but he wasn't going to go <laughs> back in the water. Really <laughs> so he's like, I'm not doing that again. And so we're like, what are we going to do? And Chris is like, our, D, our DP is like, no, we can fix this in post, which is what they say, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, there's no way you're fixing yeah. that in post. Yeah. Like, no way. So then it was like, it's kind of funny and endearing. I know it's creepy and weird. <laughs> so we're going back and forth on what this looks like. And uh, so then somewhere, I don't remember when, we were able to talk him into going back down there. But John had already left. The guy so who played Pastor Bill. The guy Bill. who played yeah. Pastor mm -hmm. Bill. So he's back in California. So I'm like, well, I'll baptize him and we'll just skip my arm, you know, kind of thing. And so the, uh, in the film, when he goes down, it's, it, it, it comes up. I think that's, is that, is that still my arm? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah the, the close shots, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you can see the muscles. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my arm. Joe was like, I'll yeah. recognize those I'll recognize anywhere. that arm anywhere. Yeah. yeah. But then y'all put back in. Yeah. We got the clean down and up that we needed, you know. And then... Um, yeah, just the end where they kind of stumble and fall. It, they played it up so well. It looks so it just good. So fun and natural. It worked. Yeah. That, that part it, is so endearing. It, yeah. it, it, yeah. it felt really joyful yeah. and just yeah. real in the moment. Phil, yeah. from this day forth, who's going to be Lord in your life? Jesus Christ. With that confession, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost for the forgiveness of your sins.
So a few people have asked that, how long did it take once you, you know, became that new man? Was there a process involved? And I always tell people, sure. You know, you didn't, it, it's not like you snapped your fingers and you come out of that watery grave. You do come out a, a renewed son of God, but, but it takes a while. On the you know what y'all's biggest uh, scared thing was? We knew we'd cuss again. Yeah, we, yeah. You, you said, well, I don't know who said it. <laughs> they were like, well, what if he just says a big cuss word right in church? I said, well, people will forgive him and they'll understand this is well, a since new you life. brought it up, you know, I thought about it, and I, I told somebody the other day, or I think it's my class, mm -hmm. I said, you know, once you get to know Jesus, cursing disappears from your from your life lifestyle. You mentioned this on the podcast recently. Yeah. 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 You'll get to where, you know, you no matter what I have, yeah. you won't curse. Yeah. He had so. a harder time with, you know, his jealousy. But this probably. is a great text to remember, Hebrews 10, 16, 14, 14. Uh, when this priest, Jesus, the great high priest, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, his death, he sat down at the right hand of God 40 days after Jesus came, was raised from the dead. 40 days he made sure enough people saw him by the hundreds they saw him, a few thousand. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool because, and here's the greatest news ever, by one sacrifice, his death on the cross for our sins. He has made, now listen to this, perfect. By one sacrifice, he, Jesus, by his death on the cross, has made perfect forever. Those who are being made holy. It's one of the greatest texts in the Bible. You say, man, I love one sacrifice. He's not counting my sins against me. I said, he's not counting them against you. Get up, get up, get up. Keep following him. Get up, get up. Don't, don't stay down. Get up. Tell him if you're struggling. Tell him you, you're going to be all right. But everybody makes mistakes. But this one priest, he's made us perfect forever. Look, those who are being made holy, it takes a while yeah. to be made holy because you're already perfect. That's to spur you on to love and good works. And it can be done. So you make a mistake, get up and say, Lord, my bad. Thank you for the blood of your blood you shed and keep on going. Just keep going. <laughs>